Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to video four. What is AI moved to? Let's run our quick little example. It's pretty simple. We have an AI that simply goes to our character. If I move my character, it'll go ahead and try to find him again, as you can see here. And it uses basic pathfinding. And if I get off the edge, it's not going to be able to get to me. So let's look at this node. There are other movement nodes. We have our simple move twos, which just simply moves somewhere. We have our regular move twos, which basically use the AI controller and give us some more robust features, such as if we're doing overlapping or if we're doing pathfinding and things like that. And then we have our AI move two. The biggest difference with our AR move to is this is an asynchronous task that is going to fire off events based on if it was a success, success or fail. If we look at the other nodes, we only have one output. Something's going to continue and then our AI maybe gets to the destination and hopefully it's good. With the exception of our move to locations which give us a return value when we fire off we still don't know if it made it to the destination or not that's where our ai move to comes in we actually have a success and a fail pin but we don't have any real big options here those are up to you to use so let's look at the node let me disconnect this it's pretty simple we have a pawn this is our control this is going to be what we're moving what has ai that we're moving now, if you notice, this says it needs an AI controller to move to a specific location. If I was to plug in a player, like for example, my player, and I told it to do an AI move to, it's going to fail. It's not being controlled by the AI currently, so nothing's going to happen. Because I'm spawning in this character with an AI controller, it's fully ready to go when I tell it to do something. So our pawn goes inside of our pawn input. Then we have two options, a destination, which is a fixed location, a vector 3, or a target actor. Like our other move to nodes, if you set up a actor as the destination, and we'll run this, it will continue to pursue until it gets to the actor. If you set up a destination, so let's do get actor location, and let's plug this into the destination instead and we hit play, it's going to find that location when it fires off and it's going to move to it. So if I'm here, it'll move to here. Even if I move later, it goes to that fixed location. So that's something to keep in mind. Destination cannot be changed. It's going to be a fixed location. Actor is an actual actor object and it's going to continue on until it gets to within an acceptable radius. And that brings us to acceptable radius. How far away are we going to be before we are determined at our target? If we set this to zero, for example, and we run this, we're going to find that when it gets to us, well, it's good. It's close enough. It doesn't have to have a big radius. If we change it to something like 200, you should notice a pretty large area. And we'll go ahead and you'll see, boom, a stop of 200. These are nice for, let's say, example, you have a melee character. You might want it to be within melee range. You set a smaller acceptable radius. Or you have a ranged character. Maybe it fires a gun or a bow and arrow that has a radius of 200 units. So you can set in an acceptable radius to that value so it'll stop out of range. And it'll be really annoying because then the character has to go chase it. Stop on overlap is just a boolean that basically adds in the pawn's radius to the acceptable radius to prevent it from overlapping and basically going zero to zero on the destination location. By default, you'll probably want to keep that on. It helps where you have different sized pawns that you have this AI on and you don't want to manually figure out a valid acceptable radius. It's just going to add itself onto. Now, like I mentioned before, the biggest difference are going to be our output nodes. Let me run this normally and look in the top left. I have two things that I'm doing here. When we execute the node, I print out what happened. In this case, it'll say execute success. After that, I'm going to print out if it was failed or successful at getting the destination. And you'll see at the top on success, success. 
So let me move somewhere else. And you'll notice it now said execute success as he's trying to get to us. And then once he gets to us, we had a successful finish. Let me let him chase me again. And this time jump across. And you'll notice it now says on fail aborted. Now this next part is slightly important. This result is basically cached. It's not accurate for the event when it's firing off every time is what I've noticed. Let me show you what I mean by this. We're going to execute a success and he'll get to me. Now let me jump across. We're going to notice execute success again and then fail aborted. Now the next time it tries, execute is aborted and fail is aborted. So the first time I jumped across and I ran my execute node here, my movement result was success. And it makes sense if you think about it. Our movement result, this node here, is only updated on a success or fail. But it will basically store the last result. So it's something to keep in mind. If you get a movement result on your execute wire, don't count on it being valid. Simple as that. Count on your movement result being valid on a success or fail being ran. And in this case, when I succeed, it'll give me a success node. And then when we fail, you're going to see on failed aborted at the top because it aborted the movement. It was not able to move because it could not find a valid path. That's why you'll notice if I get it right and, the, and I jump across, navigation path fails immediately. It can no longer navigate. Even though there's navigation mesh, mesh left, it's updated at, all, at real time and it's going to fail immediately because it could not bridge the gap because I do not have anything here it can get across with. So the AI move to node is useful due to simply these two wires. It's always going to be running and it's always going to update these based on a success or fail. So if you need an AI that's more than fire and forget, you need the AI to actually be able to be uh, responsive. For example, maybe you want the AI to continually look for the closest target. And at some point in time, the closest target will change. You can go ahead and based on if it's success or fail, you can go ahead and change the target. Or let's say you want to go into a cooldown period. When it successfully gets to its target, it maybe it'll do a melee attack. Or it goes into a cooldown period and waits before it goes to look. If it fails, for example, I hid and it can no longer get to me. I left the map. I went to an area that's not navigatable. You'd probably want your AI instead of stopping, like in this case, for example. When I get to the point where it can't move, it's just going to stand there. More than likely on the fail event, you'd want to do something like return to your home. So keep that in mind. This is not useful for the return events. And that is going to wrap up our AI move to node. Use it when you want to have events firing off on a success or fail. Otherwise, you can use the more robust move to nodes, which give you more options such as pathfinding and things, but you're not going to know if they succeed or fail. You'll have to manually check for that yourself.